Hello RPG fans and welcome back to the kingdom! This video is my next entry into the series of From a Challenge Run Perspective, where I give my opinion if this game is worth doing challenge runs of. For challenge run examples, feel free to check the description below for the challenge runs that I have done. There are six categories that I will be going over, such as the platform that I am doing the review on, game difficulty settings, game mechanics which include combat as well as non-combat, customization options which includes menuing and non-menuing, variety of challenges which includes types of challenge runs and boss fights slash special encounters, and replayability. With all six of these we are going to get our score out of 10 and we will see if this game is challenge run approved. Reviewing Final Fantasy 2 Pixel Remastered from a Challenge Runner's Perspective The Final Fantasy 1 through 6 Pixel Remastered series is available for the PC as well as the Nintendo Switch. About one week ago prior to this video, I did my first Final Fantasy 1 Pixel Remastered review, and at that time, the boost options that were available on the console editions were not available on the PC editions. However, the very next day after I posted that video, the boost options got added into all of the Final Fantasy Pixel Remastered for PC. So this brings everything current across the platforms, all the challenge run capabilities, all the features, everything. And so now you can do your favorite challenge runs on PC all over again. So this category gets a plus one from me. On to category number two, game difficulty settings. With clicking on new game as well as browsing through the menu, there's no actual difficulty settings like easy, normal, hard. Now one could argue that the boost options do add difficulty settings and I wouldn't be opposed to agreeing with that. However, I believe that is more of a customizable menu option, which we will be reviewing later in the review. But for the purposes of game difficulty options, I don't think that there are any in here. So this category does not get any points. Proceeding on is the combat section of the game mechanics. With Final Fantasy 2 PR, there's a lot of room to where you can have a lot of fun in the combat or not so much fun. Every character can do everything in the game. So there's no limitations on what a character can do in combat unless you put limitations on them. You can be a jack of all trades and a master of everything at the same time. And even with putting limitations on what each party member can do, for example, you could have Maria only use white magic, you could have Guy be the only physical attacker, you can try and have everyone use magic. The game itself is inherently very, very easy. The damage output from the party as you scale with level gets astronomically high, and the ability to recover the damage that is dealt to you is also pretty high. Now you could do a no healing run, in which case I still don't even know if that would be fun because the damage output from the party again is still going to be decent to very high in my opinion, even without weapons. So even going unarmed is going to do a lot of damage to the enemy. So while I feel I should give the combat perspective zero points, I don't think it would be right with everything that I just listed from a customizable standpoint, so I'm going to give this plus one. For the non-combat portion, I don't think there's enough to warrant adding a point into this category. There's chests that you can choose to pick up or not, and the exploration doesn't really add any sort of difficulty, it just adds more random battles for you to do. And you do have to progress in a sequential order in order to get to the next objective and progress the storyline. So non-combat category gets zero points. Bringing the game mechanics section to one out of two points earned. Menuing under the customization options is the next category. Looking over the menu, there are several categories that can affect the difficulty such as magic, being able to learn magic or not on every single one of the characters, choosing whether or not to use it. The equipment section, pretty self-explanatory, being able to equip and unequip gear. Formation, being able to have everyone in the front row to receive more damage and do more physical damage, or everyone in the back row to receive and deal less physical damage. 
So for the purposes of a challenge run, you'd probably want everyone in the front row, although it doesn't really affect too much. And then of course the configuration options, which we went over earlier to change some of the boosts and you can even reduce the boosts as well. As far as non-menu customization options that can affect the difficulty, the only thing I could think of was just collecting chests, but that's not really a customizable option. So for this category, I'm going to give it a zero, which brings us to one out of two points obtained for customization options. Next category, everyone's favorite variety of challenges. It's probably not everyone's favorite. I just said that to, you know, take up a couple more seconds of video time. So types of challenges, I came up with a pretty good solid list of about five or six different types of challenge runs that would be enjoyable from a viewer as well as a challenge runner perspective. The problem with the list is the actual difficulty of the core game itself. The game is relatively easy. So even with trying to do a challenge run of this game, you have to stack on a crazy amount of restrictions to try and even have some sort of challenge in the game as a whole. However, I cannot say the same about the boss fights and special encounters for this game. In terms of difficulty for the bosses, it's just not great. The only challenge, if I recall, that I had throughout the entire game was the turtle boss in the very beginning of the game, which I mean, even then it wasn't really that difficult, but it was on the higher end of difficulty in general for this game. And there are no special encounters in Final Fantasy 2. So this category gets a big old donut for an end result of one of two points. With the final category of replayability, I'd really like to know all of your thoughts on what rating you would give this game. For me, my personal opinion with everything that I've talked about through the pros and cons of the game, from a challenge runner's perspective, I would probably say zero points for replayability, but as a viewer, I would probably give the two points. It's really up in the air, but I think the really big deciding factor for me is the core difficulty of the game itself is going to give me the opinion that I should be giving zero points for replayability. And so that is what we are going to do. Moving forward, though, however, I have decided to change up the point distribution for the future videos, such as the game difficulty options. I've now divided that into two different categories, such as actual game difficulty settings, as well as game balance in general. And I have reduced the replayability from two points to one point. I think that that's going to give a much better perspective on trying to give these games a rating, because with this video on Final Fantasy 2, this really made me kind of think outside of the box as to why am I giving it this rating? or should I be giving it this rating instead? A lot of the categories kind of bled over into another one, so I think I'm going to redo one or two of the other categories as well and try and really define the criteria a bit more. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And this gives us a final value of four out of 10, and this game is not Challenge Run approved, although I would like to do one or two more with the ideas that I have in mind. Moving forward on what I'm going to be judging the criteria on, I think I want to change the customization options, which includes menuing and non-menuing as well. I feel like that bleeds over into other categories kind of highly. And with menuing, it's really hard not to give that category a plus one every single time, because as we all know with RPGs, you can always equip and unequip gear for the most part. So I think that I need to have more variability under the customization options or maybe just get rid of it and heavily weigh the other categories. But I do think that I want to rework it. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions or what you like or don't like about me trying to judge these games from a challenge run perspective. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video, and please let me know what you think of this video in the comments. I strive to do challenge runs that no one else has done for a game. Don't forget to like, 
subscribe, and leave a comment. Additionally, if you want to go above and beyond that, consider joining my Patreon or YouTube channel's membership with the join option next to my name below the video. And until then, I will catch you in the next review. Bye-bye.